Good morning. I want to speak about a major victory in our challenge of the Trump administration's efforts to curtail the census. But before I do that, I do want to say on what is an historic moment, uh, just a word about Justice Ginsburg and uh, this morning's events in Washington. You know, Justice Ginsburg was a hero for so many. She became a celebrity late in life, but she's been a hero for everyone who believes in equal rights for decades. And the thing about Justice Ginsburg is she was ferociously brilliant, and she also spoke with great passion, and she respected the views of people who disagreed with her, which is why she was so loved by so many. She's a real role model for all of us at this time. At this morning's ceremony, uh, the rabbi said uh, a key phrase for Justice Ginsburg, which she had in her office, was the Hebrew phrase, tzedek, tzedek, tirdof. In English, that means justice, justice shall you pursue. I used to run a program called Bet Tzedek Legal Services, and I have that saying on a plaque in my office as well. Uh, and it's a phrase that I hope will guide all of us in our nation at a moment when we urgently need all of us to be recommitting ourselves to the pursuit of justice. And in that spirit, I want to now turn to the victory in the census case to which I referred a moment ago. Uh, last night, uh, the court delivered that major victory for Los Angeles and jurisdictions across the United States in a case that's been brought by a coalition of uh, cities and counties and major nonprofit organizations around the nation. In that case, we alleged that the Trump administration was attempting to prematurely curtail census outreach and counting. And last night, the court strongly agreed with our approach and ruled that the Trump administration could not put in place imminent deadlines under which it was planning to stop census outreach and counting next week. The court said the administration is ordered to eliminate the, that deadline and a deadline of December 31st for submitting that data. Uh, the court in its ruling made clear that the administration had failed to provide any legitimate reason for cutting back on what Census Bureau staff experts had wanted just months ago. Back in April, Census Bureau staff experts recognized that COVID was going to have a major negative impact on census counting unless they changed their path. And they put in place a plan to take account of COVID that would have extended census counting and outreach through October. Uh, but then in, <coughs> excuse me, but then in August, the administration abruptly said, no, nope, we're going to scrap that plan and replace it with a plan that would have ended the census counting and outreach next Wednesday. So we went to court. We went to court because the stakes are so high for us. I will say, I think the court saw through the Trump administration's effort to try to camouflage political interference in what ought to be a nonpartisan, neutral process of making sure every American is counted. That's the process the Constitution requires. I mentioned how, how high the stakes are. Here in Los Angeles, we, we derive hundreds of millions of federal dollars in our region based on an accurate census count. We also rely on the census and its accuracy for political representation. We could have a seat in Congress at stake if there's an undercount, and LA historically has been a hard to count location. With so much on the line, I urge everyone to take the few minutes necessary to be counted in the census, be included. But in the meantime, I have more news to report this morning. Within the last hour, the Trump administration indicated it was going to appeal this ruling and move to stay it. That is to say, move to put the court's ruling on ice while it seeks to reverse it. And just 10 minutes ago, the Trump administration filed that request to stay the lower court's ruling. My guess is the administration is going to seek to take this case to the U.S. Supreme Court. 
And I will tell you, we and the coalition of which we are proudly a part are going to fight every step of the way, standing up for the constitutional principle that every American should be counted and standing up for those of us here in Los Angeles and other jurisdictions that rely on the accuracy of the census to assure we have the representation we're entitled to in Congress and the funding that everyone in our region relies upon for things like education and transportation, essential things. Now, um, I want to note that even as our case has been heating up, efforts on the Hill in Washington, D.C. have been heating up too. Uh, you've seen in the past few days a Senate bill sponsored in a bipartisan way and a House bill, also bipartisan, that would seek to put in place in law the deadlines that the, Trump, that the Census Bureau experts had sought in the first place, October 31st for census counting and outreach, and next April for submitting that data. I'm hopeful that those bills move forward even as we're going to fight to uphold the court's decision. And for anyone who's concerned about whether the court's decision that we're so pleased about will withstand scrutiny, I will say this. It's a 78-page ruling. It is meticulous. It is thorough. It is well-reasoned. And I'm convinced that it's going to withstand scrutiny every step of the way. And we're going to certainly fight for that result. Now, I'm going to say just a couple thank yous. And then I'm going to say a few words in Spanish. And then I'm eager to take questions from anybody who is watching. Uh, Rob Wilcox will receive those questions and, as always, transmit them to me. I do want to thank just a marvelous team in my office, um, which includes Kate Keneally and Valerie Flores and Mike Dundas and Danielle Goldstein. They are a remarkable group of deeply dedicated public servants whose legal skills are second to none. I also want to thank our partners across the country, from the Urban League and the League of Women Voters to cities and counties in states throughout America. We're working together as a team to uphold some of the most important principles that anybody should care about in day-to-day -day life here in the United States. I also want to thank our friends at LA City View Channel 35, who always do such a great job of advancing public service in the public's interest by covering events like this. Ahora en español. Obtener el censo correcto es muy importante para Los Angeles. Obtenemos cientos de millones de dólares del gobierno federal basados en nuestra población. Nuestra educación, medio ambiente, transportación y atención médica están en riesgo. Nuestra representación política en el Congreso depende de que el censo sea correcto. La administración Trump retiró un plan que habría permitido extensos alcances este otoño. Nos unimos a otros en una gran demanda. Y me complace anunciar que la Corte ortogó una medida cautelar preliminar en nuestra demanda um, al encontrar que la administración preparó apresuramente un plan en agosto para terminar prematuramente con el alcance del censo. Rob, are there any questions? Yes. <clears throat> Claudia Pescuta from KNX 1070 News Radio. Um, as you had mentioned the uh, appeal, uh, can you talk a little bit about the possible appeals timeline, like how soon it could get to um, the Supreme Court and a final ruling? And also, do you think that the Trump administration will bring up any new arguments in their appeal? So the administration, to answer the last question first, Claudia, the administration is going to be foreclosed from bringing up new arguments on appeal. It is saddled with the arguments and the facts that were established in the court below. With regard to how quickly the matter can move, uh, the administration, as I mentioned, just filed a few minutes ago to stay the trial court's action. Uh, the Ninth Circuit will decide whether to stay it. We will oppose any attempt to stay the lower court's ruling. There is just so much at stake. The Ninth Circuit can act very fast, or it can take some time. And the Supreme Court, 
could hear this because the Supreme Court has said that whether there's a case pending before the Ninth a, a Circuit Court or decided by a Circuit Court, if the issues are of imminent importance, the Supreme Court could take them now. So I, I just cannot say uh, what's going to be happening next time-wise, except that right now the Ninth Circuit has before it an attempt by the Trump administration to stay this decision, which put another way is the Trump administration is fighting to cut off collecting and census data and engaging in outreach in hard to count communities like Los Angeles. It's fighting to put that to a stop in just a few days by next Wednesday. And we are fighting, we are fighting to assure that every American and here in Los Angeles, every Angelino is counted and to give the opportunity for that to happen by having counting uh, and data collection extend uh, until the end, at least of October. From Caroline Chaplin from KPCC, does the judge's preliminary injunction change the schedule for reapportionment? The judge's decision does not change the schedule for reapportionment. Uh, there is no reason why the Trump administration can't put in place the very approach its own Census Bureau experts sought back in April. Uh, and that would assure that reapportionment across the nation occurs in a timely way. Under that approach, data would have been submitted to the president in April of next year, and that would be fine. So no, the judge decision does nothing to injure the rights of all Americans to be properly apportioned and to receive their fair allocations of federal resources. Quite to the contrary, the whole point of the judge's decision is to recognize how much jurisdictions like Los Angeles have at stake from an incorrect count that the Trump administration's approach would undoubtedly have assured. That's what's at stake here. The court saying, no, an accurate count makes sense unless you can provide provide a legitimate reason to administration for cutting it short, and you haven't provided any legitimate reason. In fact, the record here that was revealed through documents obtained in the course of this litigation so far reveals Trump administration bureaucrats understood in the Census Bureau the costs, the problems associated with trying to move too fast, the fact that would undoubtedly lead to an undercount. And, elite, and in fact, at least one email from one of the Census Bureau staff members raises the specter of people inferring political reasons as opposed to merits-based reasons for cutting short the census counting. So no, the judge's decision is very important and only to the good. And a follow-up from Claudia Pescuta sure. from KNX. Um, she said, do you anticipate any new arguments uh, from the plaintiff's side? No, we, we, we have made strong arguments. The court, in an extremely meticulous and well-documented opinion, has sided with our arguments. We believe that we are on solid footing. And as we go through this process and any appeals that will be underway, we are confident in the approach we have taken. It is the right thing to do as a matter of law, and it's the right thing to do when it comes to the needs, the legitimate concerns of every Angelino and, in fact, every American. So, no, we're on the right track here. Phil Dreschler from NBC4. Um, with um, the ruling and the timing um, on an appeal up in the air, um, what do you think uh, that means for the census deadline? Well, I will say that if I were leading the Census Bureau right now, I'd be saying this. So we in the Census Bureau had a plan in place that would take census outreach and counting through October 31st and reporting of data to April. Then all of a sudden in August, we were told by the, by the Commerce Department to cut that plan short. The court today or last night said, nope, you can't cut, uh, you can't impose those shortened deadlines. So if I were in the Census Bureau, I'd be assuring that I had data collectors and outreach workers in place. I'd be hiring up if I needed to. If I let anybody go, I would get them back. And I would continue to be in the field doing everything I could to comply with the goal of the Constitution, and that's to count every American. So that's what should be happening. I don't for any, in any manner want to be heard to say that people who have yet to return their census information should wait. They should do so as quickly as they possibly can. But um, right now, that deadline has been extended beyond September 30th. And again, Phil Dreschler, NBC4, sure. what is your understanding of the completeness 
of the census count in Los Angeles right now? So, Phil, I, I'm not on top of the pr precise numbers right now. I think they hover in the 60% range, something like that, give or take. Um, uh, Los Angeles is known to be one of the harder to count jurisdictions in the nation. In fact, in the court's ruling, the court highlights the fact that Los Angeles is a place um, wh which has always been hard to count and therefore which benefits from uh, aggressive outreach to assure that everyone has an opportunity to be counted. Um, so that's right now, I, I, you, you can ask some of the other folks in the uh, administration here about uh, how many people have been counted so far, but I think we are less than two thirds counted. And that underscores the importance of the litigation that we've been so actively involved with. Eric Hines, City News Service. Uh, do you have any fear or is there an indication that an appeals court may overturn this ruling? We are going to fight to uphold this ruling. And as I said a moment ago, I've been practicing law since 1983. And in that time, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of decisions. Rarely have I seen a decision that, as I mentioned earlier, is so thorough, so well documented, so meticulous, and so well reasoned. So I am very optimistic that this decision is going to withstand scrutiny. There was a point in, in the, these, the hearings that have led up to this decision um, have been uh, very, uh, uh, sometimes tense. There have been some sharp exchanges. Uh, I think the court is well aware of the fact that the government was going to seek to appeal its decision. And therefore, this judge made very certain to have buttoned down every aspect of the rationale for her ruling. And I think she's done a great job. Uh, so, no, I'm anticipating that this ruling is going to be upheld. I don't think it matters whether the appellate panel reviewing this decision is conservative or liberal, because when it comes to the law, the judge got it right. That concludes the questioning portion of today's news conference. Terrific. Rob, thank you very much. Thank all of you who've been so active in asking questions today. This is such an important issue. I know there's just so much news happening right now. There are so many issues, so many crises colliding now in our nation and here in Los Angeles. But this issue will have importance not just tomorrow, but for the next 10 years. And that's a point I want to conclude with. Any decisions regarding the census will have a lasting impact over the next decade over how much education we provide, how many transportation opportunities we provide, how much health care we provide for a decade. So that's why we're on the case here. That's why we're working so hard. Thank you very much for following today.